Coming up today on App Creative, the retail industry is ripe with app ideas. We'll unveil this week's idea, which we've come up with in five minutes. Lambda layers, what are they and how do you use them? We'll hear from Chris Chapman, Senior Solutions Engineer at Confluent. Welcome everybody, my name is Dale Richards, CEO of App Creative. We're an app development company on the Silicon Slopes of Utah, and we love building software that changes the world. If you want to create apps, scale your technology, transform your business, and disrupt the market, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell. But first, this week's software news. Small business insurer and insure tech company Next Insurance entered partnerships with Allstate and Alliance X. They raised a $265 million strategic investment to start offering tailored insurance packages to the underserved small business market via the Alliance and Allstate platforms. Twilio launches its AI startup Searchlight. Their goal is to celebrate the builders who are illuminating the future of communications and customer engagement with AI on Twilio. If you're a startup at the forefront of innovation with AI and Twilio, you can apply to be featured online by Twilio, awarded Twilio credits, and more. You can find the link down below. Meta will require advertisers to disclose the use of artificial intelligence in political ads. The policy goes into effect next year and could impact the 2024 U.S. presidential election. Read more on the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post. Links are down below. So here's the app idea for today, which I found in five minutes. People, it's so easy to come up with app ideas. Here's what I did. I went to my favorite random industry generator on perchance.org. Input the number five to tell it to give me five random industries. And the five that it came up with were consumer electronics, wireless, leisure and travel, retail, and defense and space. I did not pick defense and space. I went with retail. So in a new tab, I searched for retail industry problems. I clicked on the first organic result, which was an innovation blog from eTail Boston 2024. I saw that the first issue that they listed was related to multi-channel buying experiences. And I clicked on that and I read, the explosion in mobile retail means that in-store research and showrooming, the practice of viewing a product in-store only to make the purchase online, are now more common than ever. So basically shoppers have an idea of the product that they wanna buy. They go and they find a retail location where they can check out this product, but then they don't buy it at that location. They go online and they buy it somewhere else. That's gotta be a huge problem for retailers who are losing revenue from purchases not made in their store. They need to find a way to ensure that people come and buy in the store. So let's go to the idea log. For the summary, I put retail online reconnaissance tool. And for the description, I wrote, uses AI to search the web for products in inventory and identify bad reviews, competitive prices at other retailers, and auto suggest promotions to keep consumers buying in the store. For the problem slash opportunity, I pasted the quote from the article. For the persona, I think that this could be either the chief operations officer or maybe like the VP of retail operations. And for the source, I put Etail Boston 2024 and I pasted the link to the original article. App idea, check. Quick pause, if you're enjoying this video, hit the like button, please. It really helps us out. Also, if you're interested in joining our Discord community where you can share ideas with a group, get feedback and access premium features like live feedback sessions and workshops, go to appcreative.com slash MVP app or click on the link in the description. That will take you over to our website where you can sign up for the waiting list. There is a waiting list for this group, so please be patient until a spot opens up for you. Okay, it's time to talk about Lambda layers. AWS Lambda is a popular serverless computing service that allows developers to run code without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. If you want to learn the basics of AWS Lambda, you can check out this video, this video up here. One of the features that makes AWS Lambda so powerful is its support for Lambda layers. And in this video, we're gonna explore what AWS Lambda layers are and how they can be used. AWS Lambda layers are a way to package and share libraries, custom runtimes, and other dependencies across multiple functions. This can simplify the development and maintenance of serverless applications. What is a dependency? A dependency is when you have one chunk of code that is dependent on another chunk of code for whatever reason. So it could be that you're writing code that uses the React.js library, you need to load that library, for example. When you create a Lambda function, you can specify one or more layers to include in the deployment package. Each layer is a zip archive that contains libraries, dependencies, or custom runtimes that your function requires. You can also specify the version of the layer to use in your function, which allows you to control which version of the shared code is used. That's great for things like uh, quality as well as security. So let's look at a real world example. Let's say that you have an application that has multiple functions. 
One function could be to create an order. So let's say this is an e-commerce context, right? Another function could be to update an order and mark it as fulfilled. And a third function could be to cancel the order. Here is how you should not build this application. Let's say that all three of these functions require connecting to the database. So while you're writing the function to create an order, you include a chunk of code that connects the function to the database so that the function writes the new order to the database. Then let's say that you finish writing that create order function and you move on to the update order function and you realize, oh, of course, this function also needs to connect to the database. But I already wrote that code in the other function, so I'll just copy it and paste it over here. And when you get to the cancel order function, you do the same thing. You copy the database connection code. What could happen now? Let's say you discover a bug in the database connection code or something about the database connection changes. Well, now you have multiple copies of the same code all throughout your application. You have to go in and fix each one, retest, redeploy. You get the picture, right? It's icky. Well, with Lambda layers, you just create that database connection dependency once and use it across multiple functions. And so if you find a bug, you fix it once, not multiple times. And there's no risk of forgetting or not getting around to all the different copies of that database connection code. One of the benefits of using Lambda layers is that it can reduce the size of your deployment package. Since you're reusing code, there's less code. That means the deployment package is smaller, which can improve the function's cold start time. What does that mean? So a function that isn't being used is shut down. So to spin it up and execute it, it takes a little bit of time. That's called cold start time. But if a function is used a lot, it doesn't have time to be shut down. It just keeps being re-executed. So that would be considered a warm startup. That takes less time and can translate into improved performance that the end user might notice. So we want the start time to be as short as possible and reusing layers across functions, having a smaller deployment package, these things make the cold start time shorter. Another benefit of using Lambda layers is that it can improve the security and the compliance of your serverless applications. So by separating the dependencies and libraries into layers, you can ensure that they are properly tested, audited, and approved before they are used in your functions. You can even lock them down so that all developers are only using the appropriate layers. This can help you meet regulatory requirements and reduce the risk of security vulnerabilities. Can you imagine having security issues across all of the instances of that code that you cut, copied, and pasted to connect to the database layer? Ugh. So layers will make security a lot easier. So if you're building serverless functions, make sure that you are building them correctly using layers. AWS Lambda layers are a powerful feature. They allow you to package and share code that is common to multiple functions. With Lambda layers, you can reduce the size of your deployment package, improve the cold start time of your functions, and improve the security and compliance of your serverless applications. By using Lambda layers, you can simplify the development and maintenance of your serverless applications, which can help you deliver value to your customers faster. Here to tell us more about Lambda layers is industry expert Chris Chapman, Senior Solutions Architect at Confluent. Chris, good to have you. Thank you for joining us today. Tell us more about Lambda layers. I'm curious to know what do you think the benefits of layering are for the large enterprise and what the benefits of layering uh, are for the small or medium sized business? And are they the same? Are they the same benefits? Yeah, some of them are, some of them are not. So the biggest thing with layers that I look at is it's the redu re you're reducing, you're reducing two things. You're reducing your deployment time, right? So if I, again, going back to that minimum viable function, it, it just does this business piece of, of work and that's it. I don't have like, big multi-class structures in there and, and things like that, like that, because lambdas can only run for a couple minutes anyways, right? So we're not doing a lot of work at any given uh, function point. Uh, so how do I take that minimum piece of code and deploy that into the cloud? Uh, especially like you look at Python or Node, for example, right? You could end up with 10 lines of your own code in 50 dependencies. So I've got like barely a kilobyte worth of my code that I'm deploying but I've got megabytes of dependencies that are also going with that code into the cloud. So can I take and, and, and draw a line there between what I'm actually doing on a regular iterative basis and the code that's not changing very often? Now for a large enterprise, that might be the logging, the security, uh, some of the like standardization that they're building. So we call those like golden images if you're in the container world, like here's your base image you use and then you apply your code on top of it. Same thing with the layers. Here's the base image. It's got the, the appropriate logging mechanisms. It's got maybe the uh, uh, how do we go out the vault and get our credentials or secrets manager, what have you, right? Some of that's baked in there. And then there's just like the core piece of code that might change for a large enterprise. Uh, 
they could cycle their containers or their functions, you know, 30 times in a day. So they're doing this very rapidly, right? Now, if you're a one-man team or a six-man team or, or lady team, uh, you might be doing that, uh, you know, on like a weekly basis, right? Um, so that speed to deployment is not necessarily going to give you much of an advantage, right? If if it takes, so for example, if I'm cycling my code every 10 minutes and it takes me 15 minutes to deploy, to build the, the function, move the files around, like I'm losing, right? I can't, now I'm, I'm running out of electrons in the ethernet to, to move the code as fast as my dev team is working. If you're not working that fast, it doesn't really buy you that advantage. Now, something that where you get the advantage for both sizes would be that uh, that common package is in place. So now I can just move code. I've got the core functionality. It's there. Uh, maybe it's a security thing. Maybe I've got a dependency on a specific version of something, right? So if I check that in, I can get that error sooner if I violated one of these dependencies or versions or something like that. I can get that error sooner. So again, it's it's that deployment speed, that feedback speed. Um, the other thing I would say is the uh, just the transfer, like how big of a package do I have sitting in S3? So again, if you're a small team, a couple megabytes on S3, that's not really costing you a lot of money. If you've got thousands of packages out there and each of them are moving, 50 megabytes of dependencies around with them. Let's pull those out into a common place, do it once, and then everybody can piggyback off of that. Uh, so that, that that's the the biggest ones that that I see. Um, but the yeah, speed of deployment, reducing the package size. It sounds to me like you're saying that if you were advising an enterprise, and you often do, you would say lambdas are great for times when you have high variability of usage, but in some cases it might be best to stick with containers. Is there any other detail you want to add to that recommendation? So I think the other thing that happens with Lambda is um, it, it, it goes back to that speed and agility, right? So I don't need to worry about the larger packages. Maybe I want to trial something, right? So we're going to, we, we've got a container out there. It's doing some sort of work, uh, but maybe we want to deviate and, and see like, hey, if we change this, does it work better? Is it more efficient? So then I can deploy that very quickly as a Lambda function. We can spin that up in API Gateway and in front an API. We can test it out rather quickly, very rapidly, right? Especially if I've already got my layers in place, my core package is, is already in place. I can take that one function, change a couple pieces in it, deploy it, and it'll run and, and, and test it out. That's, that's really nice. Uh, and then I would say the other thing is if you've got in a in a big like microservices world, if I'm a large company or even a small company, to be honest, if I've got a lot of moving pieces, um, Lambda can help you. You, If you're using like a, a naming scheme and stuff like that, it can help you segregate chunks of your microservice environment. So I can say, hey, this Lambda function has permission to maybe read from this database, but but a separate Lambda function can do something else. So you, you can, you can you can try pieces out very quickly and you can segregate the security in there in such a way that you, you are safer in your experimentation, you're safer in your failure as well. Uh, so it can fail very quickly and I can recover from that. You know, I almost hear you suggesting Lambdas as a vehicle for enterprise experimentation and innovation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Now, now that being said, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of large companies that are very reliant on Lambda. So, you know, they, they, there are some companies where that is the core piece of their thing. Um, and they view these other benefits as uh, periphery, right? So, um, but I think for like the small, I'm starting up, I've got an idea, I want to front an API for like a, uh, a handheld app, right? Um, I can get that in place very quickly. I don't need to become an expert in all of the intricacies of AWS. I can deploy code and try that out. And then I can make decisions later on, like, is this cost effective? Should I move to containers? Uh, do I need more security? Do I want to break this into, like all those can come downstream at that point, but get the product out, the, the MVP time to market. Um, that, that's going to help you a lot, I believe. Chris Chapman, thank you so much for your insights into AWS Lambda and layers. We'll put a link to Chris's LinkedIn profile in the description. Thank you so much. And that's a wrap for today. 
If you want to learn more about AWS Lambda, watch this video. Or if you want more app ideas, watch this video.